stand to your feet, give you just a moment to stretch your legs, and uh, uh, as we read God's Word this morning, uh, we'll let you stand just for a few minutes, just for a minute. Stretch your legs, maybe you can sit longer uh, if we let you stretch your legs this morning. Uh, but like I said, again, it's good to be in the Lord's house on this Father's Day, and uh, I just thank God for the great song service we had this morning, and uh, uh, for all the specials this morning and what a blessing they were to us uh, to minister our hearts. I said in Sunday school this morning, that's what Christianity is about, is uh, God making us members of His family and becoming our Heavenly Father. As we talked about last week, we're no longer creations of God, but children's of, uh, children of God. And I'm glad I'm a, a child of God this morning. Mark chapter number 5, I'm going to begin reading in verse number 21. And then I'm going to skip down to verse 35 after reading uh, verse number 24. So 21 through 24 and then to 35. It says, And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and that she may live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him, and thronged him. Now verse 35, While he yet spake, there came the ruler of the synagogues, came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, certain which said, Thy daughter is dead, why troublest thou the master any further? And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto her, saith unto her, The ruler of the synagogue, Be ye not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the torment uh, that was... And, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was coming in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. And when he had put them all out, and he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entered in where the damsel was lying, and he took the damsel by the hand, and saith unto her, Talithia kumai, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. So you may be seated. We ask that you pray for us this morning. We've uh, been praying since last Sunday. I felt we should uh, do some type of Father's Day message. And I, uh, uh, we about Wednesday or Thursday, this scripture came to our mind and uh, uh, we, we read it, just read it Thursday actually on our phone. I, I didn't, I'm not too fond of technology, but I say I do love my Bible app on my phone because I've always... Uh, being able to read my Bible, and I, I, I was actually driving down the road. I know that's illegal, but I did that. Uh, but I, I, I did. I actually read this scripture. I knew what chapter of the Bible it was in, and uh, we read it from our phone. And the Lord began to deal with our hearts. So we studied this two or three days, and uh, 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 not the whole entire day, but three different days that we've looked at this. And the Lord uh, really opened the scripture to us, and I want to uh, uh, try to share with you this morning uh, what the Lord did. We're not now. We're going to try not to look at every word of every verse like we normally do. But I'm going to uh, try to just share three or four things that the Lord's shown us in this scripture. I love the Bible, uh, as we mentioned uh, Friday night. How it is alive, and if we'll uh, seek the Holy Spirit's leadership, and you just read. Now you've got to read the Bible a lot. I'll say that you just can't read over a passage of scripture and say, "Okay, God, what will I get out of that?" You read it, and you study, and you meditate. On it, and the Holy Spirit will be, begin to deal with you and open your eyes, and He's really done that uh, for us in the last few days. But this being Father's Day, uh, I, I'm going to try to encourage us, encourage the fathers is what we're going to try to do. And it's for all of us. It, 
can apply. I, I've all, often said that we always praise the mothers uh, on uh, Mother's Day from the pulpit and we rake the, the fathers over the coals. kind of seems like the way we do. But we're not going to try to do that today. We're just going to try to uh, encourage fathers is what we want to try to do. But we're also going to charge you though is what we're going to do. But now uh, you know the story. If you read in your Bible, early part of Mark chapter number 5, uh, the Lord had... Uh, healed the maniac of Gadara there, and after that he uh, got in a ship, the Bible says, and passed over to the uh, uh, other side of the Sea of Galilee, I, I'm sure there, and how uh, that's what the Bible says. And it says, and he was nigh unto the sea. Uh, now you, you pray for us this morning that uh, the Lord uh, can use us this morning. Like I said, we're not going to look uh, at every word if we can't. But it says, and behold... Uh, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue. Now, when, as, immediately after we read this, I, I thought of Nicodemus. Now, we know in uh, John chapter number 3, we also know that Nicodemus was a, a ruler of the Jews, uh, uh, I think maybe a Pharisee, and how uh, 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 this man, Jairus, I, I looked up the pronunciation of that word, I think that's the way it's pronounced, but how uh, he was also a ruler of the synagogue, and he would, uh, I, I did a little research, he would, uh, kind of organized the way the service went, what he would do. He would do the scripture reading. He would choose that and uh, different things that he would do. So he was familiar uh, there with uh, uh, the Jewish tradition is what it was. But uh, we, but now uh, we know that Jesus didn't go along with Jewish tradition. We know that. Uh, but he had also heard of this man who claimed to be uh, the Christ there uh, and the great miracles that he did or he wouldn't be there this morning. So you pray for us this morning. How... And that's what happened. It says, And behold, uh, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, uh, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, speaking of Christ, he fell at his feet. Now, uh, now we know he was uh, obviously a man of God because he, uh, as far as Jew, the Jews were concerned there uh, because he was a ruler in the synagogue. But when he had a need there, uh, we see where it led him. We, we see where he went when he saw that he had that need. Uh, this morning, and you uh, you just continue to pray. But how uh, I thought about Nicodemus. Now that's the reason I thought about that because I just wrote not a change in my Bible. Now we know that Nicodemus, uh, out of fear of the Jews, the Bible tells us there that he went to Jesus there by night. It said then came uh, uh, the same came to Jesus by night there uh, and said, Rabbi, we know thou that thou art a teacher come from God. Uh, for no man can do the miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Now, see, I didn't even read that verse, and then God just uh, calls me to right then, and I see why he calls me to do that. See, he also, Nicodemus had also what, uh, uh, heard of the fame of this man named Jesus there. And see, that's why Jesus did the miracles, as John tells us in the last chapter, of, or next to the last chapter of his epistle there, uh, that he did it, that people might know that he was the Christ, the Son of God, that he was God in the flesh, and uh, when the Jews heard him called the Christ, the Messiah, they knew what that meant. And we know uh, some believed and some didn't, but it was the miracles uh, that caused people to hear of Jesus. And we know that's the very reason that this man also uh, came there because he had heard of the, uh, what the Bible tells us even in Matthew chapter number 11, I think it is, how uh, when John had doubt in prison, now I'm going to try not to be too long this morning, total doesn't that, I'm going to get a clock put right up there. That'll help me. Uh, to try to speed things up a little bit, but how I'll uh, get a little late start this morning. But about John there, he doubted that Christ was the Messiah. You know the scripture. I love the scripture and how uh, and when he was in prison there and he'd heard of the works of Christ and how you now see we haven't planned this. It's God just put scripture in our mind uh, to try to convey the message, and that's what we're trying to do this morning. How uh, he he said, "Art art thou he that should come?" He sent his messengers. He said, "Art thou he?" Uh, that should come, or do we look for another? And Jesus vindicated who he was uh, by the miracles that he did. That's the answer that he gave John. He says, go show John again the things which you do here uh, and see. He says, the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, uh, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up. And see, that caused Jesus to be famous in his day. You could imagine... Uh, in our day, if there was a man that was to come and could really not not uh, make believe, not by uh, 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 any false way, there really heal people. I mean, immediately from diseases and that uh, the lame people that had been lame from birth, and people that, that had been deaf from birth, and people that had been dumb from birth, and people uh, that had died were uh, literally raised from the dead. Now I tell you what, that would cause a big stir, wouldn't? It? And see, that's what. 
uh, Jairus had heard there. And the reason I'm saying this, we're, we're here this morning there uh, to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what. That's the purpose of our calling today. Uh, not only that people be saved, but, uh, uh, but to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ that people might be saved. And that's uh, what we're here for first and foremost this morning. But how... Uh, first thing I want to say this morning, he was not ashamed there this morning there uh, and not afraid to come to Jesus. Why? Because uh, he knew that his little girl had a need. And that's what uh, I want to share with you the first thing. He was not ashamed to come to Christ. He was not afraid to come to Christ there uh, because he also could be punished probably for, for falling uh, or following the Messiah there because that's why Nicodemus came at night. He admitted uh, that he did it for fear of the Jews. And there are many places in Scripture that will say that. But how uh, it said that he knew that he had a need and he had heard what this man Jesus could do and that's what he did. Now, uh, so I want to share one t- thing for you this morning. Uh, first of all, his fathers there, uh, don't be ashamed or I want to charge you this morning uh, to go to the Lord on behalf of your children. <laughs> I-, I hear of all the testimonies that we've heard in Sunday school this morning and, uh, about uh, uh, fathers and all this. And I tell you what, uh, that's the, uh, the responsibility of the father there uh, to be the spiritual leader in the home. Now, I'm not going to rake you over the coals this morning, but I'm going to make a statement this morning uh, that is true. It's the responsibility of the father uh, there to be the spiritual leader in the home. If you'll read this, he was a ruler uh, in the synagogue. I'm sure he had people under him, and he probably had the authority there uh, just as the centurion did in one place, had also had a family member or a servant sick there. Uh, he could have sent someone. He could have sent them and said, go uh, get Jesus because my little girl is sick. He could have done that. Or he could have uh, done much like I do sometimes when I need something and I'm busy and I'm doing something. I'll, I'll say, Tina, run to Home Depot for me because I, don't, I feel like I don't have time to stop doing what I'm doing. And I'm uh, thankful for that. But I tell you what, when it comes... Uh, to come into God on behalf of our children. It's the responsibility of the Father to lead in that today. Uh, and that's the example that we said. And I, I said this morning in Sunday school about my daddy and my mother's here this morning, and I'm thankful for uh, the godly family that I grew up in. And I mean the example that they set before me and I, uh, the way that they pointed me, I'm thankful for that today. Uh, but I tell you what, when I, I said this morning the most impressive thing Uh, that my daddy did, and he had a lot of accomplishments, but I said I was so proud uh, that that my daddy was a preacher, and that he was a man of God, and that he uh, he wasn't ashamed to go to God on my behalf, and neither was my mother there, Uh, and and it really influenced me. And I tell you what, I was determined there when I had kids uh, because of the uh, the great life that they lived in front of me there. Now, I I wrote somewhere in my Bible this morning, or, or last night when I was studying there, because... Uh, Christianity is not taught, it's called. It is, and I've heard people say that before. Uh, And they not only taught it there, uh, as Deuteronomy 6 commanded uh, uh, the children of Israel to teach their children, but they lived it, and it's because of that that I called it. It's just like a a disease that is contagious there. If we're uh, near them enough there, it'll it'll rub off on us. And I just thank God today uh, that because of that, that I was led to an old-fashioned altar of repentance. Um, Jesus forced me to save my soul. And I tell you what, He put something in my heart to want to serve Him and to, and to see my children serve Him also. Now, I not only want uh, my children saved, and I thank God today that they're both saved, uh, but I, I charge my children continuously not to ever uh, stray from following the Lord. And I don't want them to do that. And, and we ought not be ashamed. Uh, to go uh, to to the Lord on the behalf of our children. Now, uh, let's look real quickly just at the Scripture. That's the main thing I wanted to say. Uh, in verse number uh, 2, he says, And he besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Now, a, a, again, it's the, it's the role of the father to be uh, the priest of the household. Did you know that? It is. And I tell you what, uh, when we stand before judgment today... Uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, and I know there's a lot of single mothers and single parents nowadays, uh, but I tell you what, it's because of fathers that have failed to follow God's guideline uh, for the family. That's what it is. Now, now look, just for a second, uh, and I appreciate mothers, and uh, like I say, these that do bring uh, the children, but I tell you what, it, it's not their responsibility. It's the responsibility of the father. Now, I thought about Job, just real quick. Uh, Job chapter 1 and verse number 5, it says, And it was so, we know how... Uh, 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 the Lord, that uh, the Bible tells us of this man's name of Job and what a great man he was. And this was God's uh, opinion of Job. And it says, And it was so when the days of their feasting was done, his uh, children, uh, that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings 
uh, to the number of them all. Uh, for Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and, and cursed God in their hearts. Uh, and this did Job continually. Job continu daily uh, prayed for his children. That's what we should do. I I've told this probably here before. I know I've told it several times from the pulpit. Uh, I, I not only prayed for children, but the night both of my children were born. I still, I did. We were, uh, uh, Tina worked for Dr. Martin at that time, and uh, we, not that we had special privilege, but maybe just a little bit. Uh, he'd kind of tell them what room he wanted us to be in, and there was one room back then that was kind of uh, special, and we got it. And Tina, my wife will tell you that, and it was at the end of the hall, and it was like uh, twice the size of the rest of them. It was right next to the stairwell, and I'll say that in how... Uh, when both of my children were born, I remember I stepped out of that and uh, uh, the stairwell there that goes down uh, to the bottom floors there was there and I just went in there and I got down all fours there and I prayed to God uh, for the souls of my children. I've said that before. I've told that many a time and it's uh, not nothing that I'm bragging upon myself, but it was a burden that God had given me uh, and I promised Him that if I ever had children, I promised Him I'd raise them in church. And I teach them about Jesus, and that's what I wanted to do. And I prayed for their soul. I, I, I did. And I, I remember when Michaela, I was praying for her. Uh, somebody came in, and they came down that by the steps by me while I was praying. Never looked up. I ain't got a clue who it was. Hope some way it influenced them for a positive in a positive way. Uh, but I did that. Why? Because I knew it was my responsibility to do so. I wasn't going to leave it up to my wife to have my kids in church and to raise them. It's my responsibility. Uh, and, and we ought not be ashamed uh, to go to the Lord on behalf of our children. And we ought to do it in front of them. Now, I know this little girl was unconscious at this time. She was dead, is what the Bible says. Uh, but he was not ashamed uh, to go to Jesus and say, My child has a need. Uh, now, our children have a need today. And I know you'll agree to that. That's why we put on this Bible school. Uh, that's why I've tried to help Gerald stress Sunday school. It's important that our children are taught God's Word and taught that they need Jesus today what we need to do. And I'll encourage you, if you do not have your kids in uh, uh, Sunday school, you have your kids in Sunday school. Is that a command? Amen. I'm telling you to do it this morning. Uh, but I'll say, why is that? Uh, because uh, why do we have Bible school? Why do we go out in the community and try to reach people? Because uh, there are people that are unconcerned or not raising their kids in church and teaching them that they need Jesus. And I tell you what, uh, and, and I'll say this, I was doing a little reading this week there. It's not the church's responsibility to do so. You say not, no, it's the father's responsibility to do so, to have children in church. But when fathers fail, the church has to step in. Uh, and that's what we need to do. That's, that's our responsibility. That's why I had such a burden uh, to start a program on Wednesday night, to reach kids that may not be being reached. And that's why we must do that. Now, I didn't know what was going there, but that's where we went. But don't be ashamed to... To go to God on behalf of your children. That's the first thing. Because look what he says in the latter uh, part of verse number 2. He says, I pray thee come. This symbolizes a man going in prayer before God on behalf of his children. Now, uh, let's look at the next thing. Uh, look at verse number, latter part of verse number 2. He says, I pray thee that thou come, that thou will lay thy hands. It's kind of a threefold petition that he goes to Jesus with. He said that uh, to lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and that she may live. Now that's three things our kids need, is it not? Look, look at it. That, that God might lay His hands on them. You read Mark chapter number 10, just a, a, a few chapters over. We preached from this a while back. What does it say? Jesus took the little kids up in His uh, lap there. It said He put His arms or, uh, uh, on them and put His hands on them. Uh, that's what children need today if they're going to influence the kingdom of God in their day and in their time that God's allowed them to live. I tell you what, Jesus needs their hands on them. I'll say that. Uh, the next thing there, that we, you can see how plain Scripture is if you'll just look at it. Uh, and it does good to break stuff up in parts. It's threefold. It's very clear that uh, to lay their hands on them, uh, what that they may be healed. What do they need? They need salvation. I believe that uh, uh, implies that. I really do. It's what it needs. And, and the third one, uh, that they may leave. Did you know that if your children die and save, they'll go to hell? We know that, don't we? We don't hear that a whole lot. See how quiet that was? People are afraid to say that nowadays. Uh, and, and a lot of people would be offended to hear you say that. But that's the truth. Uh, the truth offends. But I tell you what, if children die uh, once they reach the age of accountability without Jesus Christ as their Savior, uh, there is a place that God has prepared for the devil and his angels, not for people. Uh, but that's where they go if they lie lost without God. And I tell you what, if that's what it takes to get fathers concerned in this community, buddy, I'm telling them the truth. 
because that's what they need to hear and that's what they need to hear. Uh, but the second thing, don't be afraid to go uh, to God on behalf of your children. The second I wrote, uh, don't be afraid to admit, admit that we're not supermen. Uh, that ain't what I got wrote in my Bible. I just don't be afraid to admit that we're limited in what we can do and that we need God. Now, I know when my kids was little, they thought I was Superman, kind of little Superman, but I was a Superman. Uh, in their eyes, I could do anything. They were amazed I wasn't scared of the dark. And, uh, and, and Abby was telling somebody just the other day something was messed up, and she said, my daddy can fix it. My daddy can fix anything. Uh, but I tell you what, we need to admit to our children that we're not perfect, and they know I'm not. They've lived with me all these years, uh, but, but that we're limited, and without God, we can do nothing. And see, uh, that's what impressed me so much about my daddy. And, I, and I'm going to brag on my daddy just a second. I do a lot, but I see what he's the greatest influence uh, uh, for as a man in my life. I tell you what, he was not afraid to admit there that he needed Jesus. And I'd see him pray all the time. And I, I knew when he, he was in trouble, he'd go to God. And when uh, we were in trouble, he'd go to God in front of us. And I tell you what, it made a mark on my life. And I, and I tell you what, I thought he was Superman. I really did. Uh, but he was not afraid to admit that he was not. But I tell you what, that made me think he was even more Superman uh, when he was big enough to admit that he is not perfect and that he needed the Lord. And, and that's, uh, fathers, that's what we need to do. Uh, admit that we're not Superman and that we need God. Uh, 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 a fellow I met just this week, and uh, uh, this week, never met him before, said he's going to try to bring his kids out of the Scurvy Club. He was telling some. Uh, away the other day that he done something happened and he knew it was God and he said I was careful to tell my kids that it was God. That's what he said. He said I said wait just a minute. And he said you know who done that? He said I want you kids to know that God did that. And that's what we need to do. We need to point to Him. That's what we need to do. Now, now and it says verse twenty four. I've, I've got three. It says and Jesus went uh, with him. He, when when the man called, Jesus went. He promised he never fail for sake. John 13, 14, 13 and 14, He promises that anything that we ask in His name, He'll do it. You can depend on Jesus today. Now let's move on down to verse number 35. I've got to hurry. Uh, now look what He says. He says, While He yet spake, there came from the roof... Now listen, they, you see the story. I've kind of broke it up. Uh, uh, the man runs to Jesus. His daughter's uh, 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 in very dire need. You can read the life at the point of death. Uh, while He's talking to Jesus and begging Him to come, one of the... Uh, 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 somebody from the ruler of the synagogue's house probably had a servant most likely came and said uh, I'm sorry but your daughter's died you need to bother Jesus anymore that's what he said uh, that's what he said but they didn't know who Jesus was did he uh, they, hadn't, uh, they hadn't read John 11 like me we, me and you have when he says I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die believeth thou this they hadn't heard that yet but listen what Jesus assures them of. Look in verse number uh, uh, 35. It says, While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue house a certain and said, Daughter, uh, thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any more? And soon as Jesus heard the word that he'd spoken, he said unto them, uh, Look at this, The ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. What's he talking about? That I am the resurrection and the life. That's what he's talking about. That's what he asked them in John 11, wasn't he? Uh, believest thou this? I am the resurrection and the life. And we've done said that. Uh, he says that, uh, to them that believe, uh, believest thou this? And that's what Jesus asked him. And that's the same thing that he's saying here there. Uh, you, just don't, you just don't be afraid. You just believe in me and what I can do is what he said. Now I'm going to stop there just for a minute. Now uh, and say just a couple of words about faith. Uh, he tells them to only believe. But I tell you what, faith alone will not do a thing. You read the book of James. Uh, uh, faith being alone uh, without works is dead, the Bible said. It's our works that prove that we have faith. Uh, but faith in itself is useless. The Bible tells us that God has dealt to every man a measure of faith, but what's the purpose of that? That we might put it in Jesus Christ. It, it's, it, it wasn't His faith. You, you, there's a break in the story. While He's on His way, there's a woman with an issue of blood. You know the story. She's been all she had. Uh, at all the physicians, and they hadn't got any better, actually got worse, the Bible says. And she had heard also heard of Jesus and what He could do, and she said, if I could just uh, touch but the hem of His garment, I'll be made whole. You know the story. Uh, and uh, uh, we know the story he touched it. Christ felt that virtue had went out of Him. The woman was afraid, and she fell at His feet there uh, and told Him the truth. And He said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace 
uh, and be whole of thy plague. What made her whole? It, it was not her faith. It, 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 that's what Jesus said, thy faith is made thee whole. But it was the object of her faith. And who was that? It wasn't a what. It wasn't faith itself. We hear a lot of talk about faith today. Oh, my faith got me through. My faith in Jesus got me through. That's what it did. He's the one that's going to, he gave me eternal life, and I tell you what, he's the one that's getting me through this life. And see, that's what Jesus was meaning. He says, be not afraid, only believe. Put your faith in me and it'll be okay. And, and that's what we need to teach our children. Now, I've, I've got to move on. I don't want to keep you too long. I know it's Father's Day. Uh, he said, and as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto them, be not afraid, only believe. And, he, and it says, and he suffered no man to follow him. Say, Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. So uh, he, he wouldn't let nobody else go to the house with him except three of the disciples. So it says, and it said, he, he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the tumult, tumult that means just the wailing, weeping, the turmoil, uh, and saith unto them, uh, uh, them that wept and wailed greatly. Now I'm going to stop right there just for a minute. Don't be ashamed to go to God on behalf of your children in front of your children. Don't be ashamed to pray. Uh, uh, we do that often at home, and we don't like we used to. We always pray over our meals, and I used to do because Abby, she's so shy sometimes. But now, when somebody else is around, Abby will pray. You know, she likes to do that. But how? Uh, but don't. We did that this morning. I prayed for Abby. She don't feel good. I prayed for Michaela, and I prayed for my wife. Do that in front of your kids. Pray in front of your kids. Meet at night and pray. We used to do that, and I've failed lately. We know as our kids have got older, we don't do that. But we used to pray. I remember my mo mother's here. <laughs> She'll tell you, we had a split-level house, and you go through the living room, and you step up in a little hall and turn right up the steps, and it's up to mine and Perry's bedroom. That's where it was. And Mom would tell you this. We'd meet on them steps most every night, wouldn't we? When we was little kids, Daddy and Mama and us three kids when my sister was still at home. She got married in 1978, and I was 13 years old. But up until that time, we'd all meet on them steps. That's what we'd do, and we'd have prayer at night. Uh, and especially when there was some kind of trouble going on. Uh, there's some kind of trouble going on in the home. That's where we'd meet. We'd always, we'd, kind of a good place for all five of us just to bow down. was on a set of steps. It's kind of like our little family altar. And I've never shared that. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad to get to share that. And that influenced me. And that's what we should do as fathers, be the spiritual leaders in our home. Now, now, listen, what am I saying there? I didn't know we was going there, but that ties right into what we're fixing to say. As fathers... Don't be afraid to bring Jesus in the home. I tell you now, see how obvious that is? God ain't a God's word amazing. <laughs> I tell you what, we go to Him, and what do we do when we go to Him? We bring Him home, is what we do. And that's what we do. See, we go to Him, we admit we're not Superman, and we bring Jesus to our house. Why? Because He is Superman. Uh, he, he's God in the flesh, and He can do anything, He can meet any need that we have. And see, that's what happened. And I got one more we're going to show you, and then we're going to make it done in a minute. So, so look, uh, don't be afraid to bring Jesus in your home. Now, now I'm not going to read all these. I was this morning, but I didn't know what I meant to do. Re read Matthew chapter 7, verse number 24 through verse number 27. I want you to do that. I preached on that one Wednesday night, a few, a few Wednesday nights ago, how that those two verses are not the sermon. Those two verses are, are the conclusion. Matthew 7. Matthew 7, I think it is. I hope I'm right. I'll probably give you the wrong reference. Matthew 7, uh, yeah, verse 24 through 27, talking about building your house upon a rock. That's what he's talking about. And that's not the sermon, as I said, and I realized that when I studied that. That's the conclusion to the sermon. He said, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon the rock, and the, the rains descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not. Why? Because it was founded on a rock. And that's why we need to bring Jesus in the home. He needs to be the foundation not only uh, of our lives or of this church building, but of our home. Uh, he, he needs to, and I tell you what, if He ain't there, He can't be your foundation. Is that not right? Amen. Say amen, somebody. Uh, now listen, this, uh, now look, that's the next thing. Uh, another verse of script, a couple verses. Psalm 127, 1. The Bible says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. What the scripture says. What does that mean? If you've got a home, you need to let the Lord keep it. What does that mean? That means to take care of it, to guard it. It is what that means, and that's what He needs to do there. Now, one other place, Exodus 12. I thought of this while we were studying, uh, and, I, and I marked these. I read these last night, or not before last, or the day before yesterday morning, or, or sometime. Listen, just for a minute. 
Exodus 12. The Lord had done told the children of Israel, we know all the plagues and all the things that He had sent on the land of Egypt. And He said, the last plague is going to get Pharaoh's attention. I'm going to kill every firstborn in the house. But there's one way you can escape it. And that's by killing the, the blood, uh, blood of a precious spotless lamb there and putting the bl- blood upon the lintel and upon the door cover. Whose responsibility was that? The man. Look at it, what it says in Exodus. You don't have to look. Exodus, just read it when you get home. Exodus uh, chapter 12, verse number 2, it says, Speaking to the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth month of the day of the month, ye shall take to them every man a lamb. And you can read it. The man, the man, the man, the man, the man. It, it wasn't the wife's responsibility to go get that lamb. It wasn't the right wife's responsibility to go kill that lamb. It was not the li- wife's responsibility to put the blood on the door. It was the responsibility of the father of the house. And you read that. Now, boy, I tell you what, now that's clear in Scripture also. And that's why I say I'm not getting on to the, uh, of the fathers today, but I'm charging you that you be sure when you leave here today, you know it's your responsibility. And, and that ain't my idea. It's God. You read Ephesians 5. You read the... Uh, Genesis chapter 3. You read 1 Timothy chapter 1 and 2. I tell you, it's our responsibility to do so. And that's it. So remember that. Don't be afraid to bring Jesus in your home because it's uh, uh, your responsibility to do so. Now we're not focusing on the miracle. i got one more thing I want to say. And I'm just going to read this real quick. 39. He said, And when he was coming to them, he says, Why make you also a do and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed into scorn, and when they had put them out, I'm going to stop right there just for one second. What did Jesus do when He came in the home? Put out all the hindrances. Did He not? I'm thinking about shooting my television and my computer. I'm serious. Sometimes I do. And you you, you can ask my wife for years. I went for years. Probably years. I'm seven, eight, maybe ten years. My mom will tell you things. That's all I ever done is read my Bible, and I didn't even watch television. Somebody, oh, you don't watch television, but I've got what I do now. And sometimes I watch more than I should. Put out all hindrances. That's for me too this morning. That's what we need to do. Looking at cars online. I, I know another here that does. I don't call them names, uh, but I, I love cars. I told the brother, seen my pastor, brother Henry Loggins, the other day. He's got. I showed me all his cars. I'm like, quit this. You're tempting me and all these beautiful restored cars he's got and all this stuff. And I told Henry, I said, Henry, I just told my wife the other day, I prayed that God would take that from me, the love for cars for me if it's a hindrance. And I mean that. And, and, and y'all know, I, my wife and my mama tell you I'm a nut. <clears throat> I, I am. But, but I believe it's okay if you don't let it hinder, but sometimes it's a hindrance. And I tell you what, sometimes we need to put all hindrances out of our home. And we need to do that. Now, I, I, let's move on. I, I, I confess. I done some confession there. Whoo, I feel good. <laughs> now listen, just for a minute. And they laughed him to scorn, put out uh, all the, put, put, them, put them all the hindrances out. Now let's say this real quick. Look at the next thing. He, he says, and he taketh the father and the mother. He what? We, can we have a, like a marriage day or something? We have a father's day and a mother's day. Let's do a sermon sometime on mamas and daddies staying together. We need to do that sometime. See, they were together. Where'd he go? He took Jesus home. And I tell you what, what did Jesus do? He took the mom and the daddy and he shared them together in there with a the little girl. What does that symbol that symbolizes? The unity of the family. Man, it's awesome, son. I tell you, this book is awesome and God is awesome. Now listen just for a minute. I got to hurry. It says, and he took the damsel. I like it when you don't plan nothing. Ain't it amazing? You know? Uh, now look what it says. It says, And he plant, took the damsel by the hand and saith unto her, I'm not even going to try it. It's Greek. And I, I ain't studied Greek like Brother Golly said. I know a little Greek. He's about that tall. Uh, that's what he used to always say. But had, listen, just for a second. It says, Which has been interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, rise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked for she was of the age of 12 years and were astonished with great astonishment. And he charged the straight basis that no man should know it. I bet they disobeyed that last verse. You'll bet. You, you read it other places in Scripture. Jesus would command people not to tell them what He just done, and that's the first thing they said. That's the way your kids are. You sometimes don't you do so and so, don't you say so and so. You'll get in the crowd, and that's the first thing they say. Especially Abby. You just got to be careful <clears throat> what you say. But now listen, just and that I guarantee. Now listen, listen. This, this, I said this. We'll close them with this. I read that, and I thought, just imagine. Now see, the daddy started all this. The kid got sick and he went to Jesus. 
But just look what a testimony for generation after generation after generation that this became. All because of why that daddy was not ashamed to go speak on behalf of his children. Now, ain't that amazing in Scripture? Look what he says. And I just I wrote my Bible. I tell you, got me a new red pen last night. I said, I need a red pen. I got so much stuff wrote in my Bible, I can't read it. thought if I wrote it in a red pen, I could see it better. So see right there, I wrote something down. I, I wrote, a, a, father, a father's faith impacted a daughter's life. His granddaughter, if he had grandkids, his grandkids, his great-grandkids, his great-great-grandkids. Why? Because you know that little girl told her kids that she got married and had kids. You know, I was dead one time. And my daddy went and got Jesus. And he raised me from the dead. <laughs> See? The little grandkid. Hey, you would not believe this. But did you know that my or the kids, my mama was dead one time and my granddaddy went and got Jesus and ra raised her from the dead? The little grandkids. Hey, did you know that my grandmother was dead one time and my grandfather or great-grandfather went and got Jesus and he raised her from the dead? And see, how, look at us today. What are we reading in the Bible some 2,000 years later? That some daddy went to Jesus on behalf of his little sick girl and Jesus raised her from the dead. And I tell you what, now why, why, why was that? Because of what this daddy did. And I, may, I ain't never preached from this, y'all. I preached from Mark chapter 5 about the woman with the issue of blood half a dozen times. But I've never preached from this. And God gave me this, and I kept praying all week. Man, I mean, it worries me sick when I don't know what I've got to preach on Sunday. And I prayed all week, and I thought about this man with a sick daughter, and I thought, that i got to get something out of that. And I see what, God laid that on my heart, and He blessed me like I've never been blessed in a long time. But, but see, fathers, what an influence you might do. One little bitty thing. But it can influence generations. I tried to read just a few minutes in the Old Testament there about uh, Abraham's faith and uh, Isaac's faith and Jacob's faith and how all that just was handed down. And, and that's what we do. We, we I Sometimes I, I get so discouraged, and I ain't been lately. Since I've been Mount Olive, Lord, I've been up on the mountain. Now I'm looking for the hill. It's coming someday. I'm going down it. Uh, but I tell you what, I get, I've been so discouraged sometimes. I think the little bitty part that I do might not be an influence in nothing. But I'll say this, and you stand to your feet if you want to. Go ahead and stand to your feet. I'll say this. They come with a song, but I'll say this. If I don't reach, now I know I've got to do more than that, but if I don't reach anybody but my own kids, I tell you what, that can influence eternity, can it? It can influence the kids and the great-grandkids, like I say, and, and, and it affects eternity, does it not? And, and, and I'll say this. If every daddy in the whole world, and we know that'd be a miracle, would just make sure that Jesus reached their own, he reached their own kids with the gospel, and they all got saved, tell you what, the world would be a good place, wouldn't it? Why? Because all daddies took the responsibility, not only just to, and I'll say this real quick, people father children all the time, and don't do, I know somebody just the other day, I heard it, they'd father the children, and just, they hadn't been there since, you know. I tell you what, anybody can do that. But I tell you what, it takes a man to be a daddy. It takes a man to stand up and be a daddy. And not just provide the material things. Sometimes that, you know, they, they may uh, even provide material things. But I tell you what, a, a godly heritage is the greatest thing that we can leave our children. Uh, the greatest thing that we can leave our children is a godly heritage this morning. I, I, I don't know the invitation this morning. I, I don't have a clue. But, but just as fathers, I hope I've caused you to leave here like I'm serving the Lord. Be like Joshua in chapter 24 and verse 15. He told them, uh, Israel, he commanded them, said, y'all have got a choice. You can choose today. But he said, today's the day you make a choice. Choose this day whom you will serve is what he said. But it's for me and my house. I'm going to serve the Lord. And we've got that on a plaque in our house. We've got several little plaques like that around through the house. And I tell you this, you better keep what you vow. If you vow it this morning, you better do it. You better do it because God has no pleasure in fools this morning. Just, I just want to encourage you uh, to, to be a godly father. And I've tried not to rake you over the coals too bad this morning. I'm trying to encourage you and might cause you to leave here with the determination that I'm going to serve God and that I'm going to raise my kids and I'm going to show them that I love Jesus and it will influence them for the good, I promise you, this morning. As he sang.